on the day of Ghadir, Ali was announced Amir. His devotion and justice were clear. Bravery, knowledge, and sincere. On the battlefields, he was a lion with no fear. And in the middle of the night, to the orphans, he was loving and so dear. My respected viewers, brothers, and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to a new episode of Life from Karbala with me, your host Ahmed Ali. I would like to congratulate all the Muslim community, the Ahlul Bayt, and Imam Sahib al-Asr wa zaman Imam al-Mahdi, may Allah hasten his reappearance for the completion of our religion, for the day and the greatest day and the greatest Eid to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Eid al-Ghadir. So thank you very much for tuning in this episode. And inshallah, tonight, we are going to discuss the significance of Eid al-Ghadir and why it is so significant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Ahl al-Bayt. Also, talking about narrations from the Qur'an, sorry, verses from the Qur'an, narrations from Ahl al-Bayt, salawatullahi alayhim. But before we commence further into the episode, uh, let's welcome our dear guest and my dear brother, uh, Sheikh Muntadha Al Karbala'i. Assalamu alaikum, Habib Sheikhna. How are you? Alhamdulillah, how are you? Alhamdulillah, I would like to congratulate you. Thank you very as much. As I congratulated my respected viewers and brothers Thank you. and sisters. Uh, what are your emotions on, on, on such a blessed uh, evening, on such a blessed night? I don't know what to say because after, when you read the hadith of Adil Bayt, peace be upon them, you begin to realize how grand this day is. Mm -hmm. When the Imam, peace be upon him, states that this day is more honorable and more greater and more grand than the Eid al-Fitr, Eid al-Adha and the Friday. SubhanAllah. And don't forget, our master of our time, when he appears, he appears on a Friday. SubhanAllah. But this great, this day is even greater than that day. And of course, for many reasons, which we will discuss, inshallah, tonight. Inshallah, inshallah. Because hopefully we'll bring a closer understanding and picture to the entire world of the importance of this day in terms of Islam and in terms of being as a Muslim, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Um, discussing, historically discussing, um, what exactly happened and why did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam chose Ghadir Khum uh, for this blessed occasion? I mean, historically speaking, um, many historians, many scholars have mentioned uh, various narrations from Ahl al-Bayt, from Prophet Muhammad himself regarding the atmosphere of that area. So if you can enlighten us with that, please. Inshallah for sure. Allah khalikum. Now, excellent question, because it's important to look at the geographical area in which the event of Ghadir took place in. Mm -hmm. Now, let us pretend we go back in time now. Mm -hmm. We go back to the 18th of the Hujjah on a day like this. We go back to 10 years after the migration, the Hijrah of the Prophet Wasallam. The location known as Ghadir Khum or the location today is called Ar Rabigh. And this area, if you're to analyze it geographically, you'll find it a very important area, especially for the Arabs. You see, even before the Islamic period and Islamic era, before the coming of Islam, the coming of Rasulullah, even in the time of Jahiliya, between mm -hmm. these cities, Mecca and Medina, between the cities surrounding Mecca and Medina, this location of Ghadir Khum was known by the Arabs, was known by the caravans, was known by the pilgrims as an area rich in soil, as an area that carries ponds of water. And then you see that a lot of people, when they used to travel, they would rest in this area. Mm -hmm. They would repl replenish their supplies, feed their horses, fill their water, water skins with water. And then they would depart to their various cities. Also, what's very interesting that one of our very close friends and teachers, he narrated to us a very important geographical hint about Ghadir. Mm -hmm. And I think unless you actually go there, you can feel this. And yeah. since this person has been informed by a person that was there. So he says that one of our friends told us that upon him reaching Al Ghadir, he mm -hmm. called the Sayyid up and he told him, um, Sayyidna, um, I'm on the top of Al Ghadir cliff and uh, when I utter, when I speak, even though I'm not using a high decibel, a high sound, 
I feel my voice being echoed kilometers and kilometers ahead. Yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed Rasulullah through the revelation that when you reach this point of time, this, this exact coordinate on this map in the, uh, the entire world, he could have easily did it in Mecca. He could have done it in Medina. Why did he do it in the Hajj? Why did he pick this location? Because he wanted to, make, wanted to make sure that his voice is heard by the thousands and thousands. As you know, the numbers tell us 30,000, 40,000, 70, Allahu alam how many numbers. We have so many narrations yeah. that we can't even pinpoint the exact number. No. There's no speaker systems back in those yeah. days. Rasulullah through this wilaya taqweeniyah, through this ilm that was bestowed upon him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, was, he was told by, Rasul, by, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, Ya ayyuhar rasul, بَلِّغْ مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ مِنْ رَبِّكَ وَإِنْ لَمْ تَفْعَلْ فَمَا بَلَّغْتَ رِسَالَتَهُ وَاللَّهُ يُعْصِمُكَ مِنَ النَّاسِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَهْدِي الْقَوْمَ الْكَافِرِينَ Jibra'eed descended upon Rasulullah. As soon as Rasulullah, pretend like this, pretend you have a film that's reeling. Rasulullah passed by the specific location on earth. And this ayah was informed by him. And he told him, Ya Rasulullah, preach what is revealed to you from your Lord. If you will not preach, it would be as though you have not conveyed my message at all. That means if you do not preach what I want you to preach, which is appoint and, and inform the entire ummah that Ali ibn Abi Talib, Ruhi lahu al-fida, is the imam after me. He is the recipient of the divine supreme covenant. He is the divine leader. He is the commander of the faithful. And then he stopped 30,000 people in order to preach this to, the, to, to, the, to this entire ummah. And of course, we will further, we'll go on as the night goes, and we'll speak on how much people attended. Who were the attendees? Yeah. Some of the Muslims today call them the greatest Sahaba attended this, and they heard this. Yeah. And then narrated this. The greatest companions, of the greatest Muhammad companions, yeah. so-called companions of Rasulullah, yeah, so narrated this had narrated this this incident, and they were there and they heard this beautiful, eloquent sermon of Rasulullah, the sermon that was delivered by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala through revelation, because Rasulullah does not speak out of thin air; it's not but a revelation, as the Quran says. Yeah. So I mean, when when you mention um, that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, as soon as he uh, went to Ghadir, uh, was he entered Ghadir? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Jibra'il to him to reveal that verse. Yeah. I mean, before that event, before um, that occasion, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hinted, uh, you know, a, a, a lot of times, times, several times, as narrated by, uh, you know, both Mukhalifin uh, and, and Shia books, um, that Rasulullah narrated that Ali ibn Abi Talib. Is, is the one to succeed me. So, uh, but how, subhanAllah, how Ghadir became, you know, the, the most significant aid because as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam states in his sermon, اليومu akmaltu lakum deenakum. Today, I have completed your religion and accepted the religion of Islam to you and for you. So, I mean, it's, it's very significant. And also, um, uh, Alam al tabras he narrates in his book, Al-Ihtijaj, uh, he quotes Imam Muhammad al-Baqar, alayhi salam, who quotes his, grand, his great-grandfather, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, at the end of the sermon, after Rasulullah finished, no. before he says, Man kuntu mawla fahada aliyun mawla, he says, Islam is established by five things exactly. prayer, charity, fasting, pilgrimage, and wilaya. Adhering wilaya, as the respected viewers may know, uh, wilaya is adhering to the guardians authorized by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he concludes, Rasulullah concludes, nothing is more emphasized than wilaya. Than wilaya. Nothing we can extract from that narration Important. that nothing is important as in significance as wilaya. And that's that, that's very significant. So speaking about the narrations of Ahlul Bayt Salawatullahi Alayhim, um, what did Ahlul Bayt narrate 
regarding this blessed occasion. I mean, we have hundreds yeah, of quotes, hundreds of narrations from Al Kafi, from Alam al Tabrusi, from uh, many historians and scholars in Islam, both from Mukhalifin and from Shia books. So, if you can discuss some course, narrations, that would be of course, amazing. Of course, inshallah, it is my job on this night to inform my viewers and whoever watches with us today to show them the importance of wilaya, the short term, the importance of Ghadir. And none can do this except who? Except the progeny of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wa sallam. And of course, since we know Kalam Ahli Bayt is all nur, everything that comes out of them is a light. And since this is considered as a majlis, right now we're gathered, Allah testifies to our gathering. My master, Abi Abdullah Hussein Ruhud al Fida and Fadl Abbas, they testify and they see our maqam now. And then my master, Amal Hujjah, is with us right now too. And I want to narrate what they say only, nothing from my tongue. And just to clarify, Majlis means as a sitting, doesn't mean as a yeah. sad occasion. A it could be yes. A, a, yes. just a gathering. Yes. So j just to clarify that. Yeah. And then we want to narrate from them because when we read the dua of Sadiq what does he say? He says, Al qawlu minni fi al ashya qawlu Ali Muhammad. Oh, Sadiq Sadiq tells us that when you begin speaking, say, Al qawlu minni fi al ashya qawlu Ali Muhammad. Fi ma asarru wa alanu. Everything that I utter is but the words and the reports of Al Muhammad. So we have chosen a couple of hadith here, and inshallah, some of them will narrate in full, some of them will narrate in short, just to get a better understanding mm -hmm. of the day of Ghadir. There is a Mosu'a called Mosu'at Hadith Ahl Bayt, and this book, the narrator or the, the compiler, <coughs> what he does is he compiles various ahadith from the Ahl Bayt in various categories in Faru' al-Din and Asul al-Din. So in this case, he narrates it from who? From al-Saduq, Shaykh al-Aqdam al-Saduq. We don't know Shaykh al-Saduq, Sahib al-Khisal, Sahib man la yahdur al-Faqih, Sahib ayun al-Akhbar al-Rida, one of our most prominent scholars. Shaykh al-Saduq narrates the following report on who al-Hassan ibn Rashid, al-Rashid. He says, that Abu Abdullah Sadiq was asked, is there a Eid other than the Eid of Al-Hadha, Al-Fitr, and Al-Jum'ah? He has a question, he has an istiftar. He wants to know, yeah, Abu Abdullah, is there a different Eid? Abu Abdullah says, yes. The believers have an Eid that is greater than the ones you mentioned. Important, greater than the ones you mentioned. That is the day in which the Apostle of Allah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam designated and appointed Ali, peace be upon him, as the commander of the faithful, a divine leader, an imam, and he took a covenant upon all the believers on that day, men and women to this day, on that day of Ghadir. Then the, he was asked, the imam was asked, which day was that? The imam Ali Salatu Wasallam says it was the 18th of Dhul Hujjah. Now this is the part where it's ajib concerning the merit of this day. Mm -hmm. We have merits on Eid al-Adha, we get from A'mal, Eid al-Fatr, the Jum'ah. Mm -hmm. Listen to these merits. The A'mal, the religious duties performed on this day equate the religious duties informed in, in, uh, performed for 80 days of regular day. That's one thing. The believer on this day should increase in his dhikr, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He should send his salutations and peace and blessings upon Muhammad and Muhammad. Mm -hmm. And he who has a family should spend on his family in order for his money that he has to be blessed with this day's title and with, with, this, with this occasion's title. That's one example. A different example that has the same siyaq, the Imam was also asked about, about is there a different Eid than Al-Fatr Al-Adha? In this case, Al-Mufaddal which is a very close and trustworthy companion of Ibn Abdullah Sadiq Sallallahu Alaihi He says, أَعْضَمُهَا وَأَشْرَفُهُمَا These are the words of Abi Abdullah Ja'far Muhammad Muhammad Sadiq. Not fulan, fulan, not anybody. The words of an Imam appointed by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala as a divine leader. أَعْضَمُهَا وَأَشْرَفُهَا يَوْمُ الثَّامِنِ عَشَرْ مِنْ ذِي الْحِجَّةِ وَهُوَ الْيَوْمُ الَّذِي أَقَامَ فِيهِ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَآلِهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَمِيرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَنَصَّبُهُ لِلنَّاسِ عَلَمًا That 
this day is the day in which that's most honorable of the days and most grand of the Eids. It is the 18th of the Hijjah. It is the day in which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam appointed Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib, as what? The commander of the faithful, the divine leader appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, Al-Mufaddal wants to understand and bring forth the picture closer to himself. He wants to know, does this day have a different amal concerning Salm, Ghusl? In this case, the Mufaddal asked the question, Ya ibn Rasulullah, what are my obligations on this day? Isma, mm. Obligations on this day. Yeah, so what are my wajibat on this day? Now, of course, the Fuqaha have have did istidraq of this and they have said it's mustahab, highly recommended. Highly recommended. In this case, it says but it's obligatory. obligatory. And inshallah, sooner or later, we'll go through the when we go through the khutbah of Rasulullah, we'll find the importance of narrating the khutbah of Rasulullah to the people. And we find the importance of reviving this day in general. No. We will get there, inshallah. inshallah. But listen to this right now. It is incumbent upon you to fast this day. Give thanks to Allah and glorify Him. Even though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deserves glorification and thanks every single day. Furthermore, this is the sunnah, the tradition of the prophets. Upon appointing their successor, they command their successor to fast on that day, which they are appointed as the day of Eid. Lastly, he who fasts on this day receives more merit than one who performed religious duties for 60 years. The other one said 80 months. This one says 60 years. 60 years. So you can tell that the, 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 maybe the mistake in the, the, cause the Imam doesn't make a mistake. It's from the narrator and the transcriber yeah, yeah. that might have had. So Allah alam, 60 days 60 or 60 years, years or, six or even more than that. Like we said, the ma'rafah is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Now, a different hadith here. No. In summary, there was a gathering in which Ali ibn Musa alayhi, was sitting. Mm -hmm. And you narrated a part of this hadith. No. This is that what happened before this. They were sitting down. They were talking about Eid al-Ghadir. Some people began to deny its, its merits, yeah. deny its blessings. Right away, Imam Rada entered and he said, my father narrated to me from his father. He said, the day of Ghadir in the heavens is more notorious than on the earth. Then he begins to say, Ibn Abi Nas, wherever you are, attend the day of Ghadir beside Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ruhi oh, al-Fida. For Allah will erase the sins of every believing man and woman on this day, sins of 60 years, all will be erased, the Imam says. Furthermore, Allah will free a multitude of slaves on this day, more than he frees in the month of Ramadan, more than he frees on Laylatul Qadr. And you know how much slaves are freed on the Laylatul Qadr of Ramadan from hellfire. The dirham spent, if you spent a dirham for your brother, for your family member on this day, Allah says it will be multiplied by 1,000 dirhams. So the rizq will come. SubhanAllah. Then it says, the Imam says, henceforth, I advise you to spend on your brothers and sisters on this day. SubhanAllah. In a similar narration, he was asked uh, in the same meeting, he says, um, Ibn Rasulullah, to Umrullah alayhi salam, they asked him, his companions, um, what should we do? on a day like this, like uh, Eid al-Ghadir. Imam Musa al-Ridha, Imam uh, Ali al-Musa al said, it is highly rewarded to be in Najaf on this blessed day. Exactly. Yes. And to it perform, exists. before you go to perform ziyara, do ghusl, and then go perform <laughs> ziyara at uh, Imam Ali shrine, alayhi salam, alayhi salatu wa salam. the a'mal for this day are many. The a'mal, if there are many. You, have, you can pray, a tool, there's a two rak'at prayer in Fatih yeah, al-Jannah yeah, that yeah, Abbas yeah. al-Qum narrates. A lengthy du'a that he narrates. A ziyara of Imam Ali alayhi salam, a ghusl, fasting. And now, there is, inshallah, one more report before mm -hmm. we move on. I want to bring this viewer closer and closer and closer to the importance of this day. My job here is to bring the viewer as close as I can to the importance of the day, even though I myself am maqasr no matter what concerning yeah. the fall of this day. Allah and Allah testifies to this. I'm trying my best, inshallah. inshallah. This hadith caught my attention because it has various examples from the various prophets. And most, if not all the prophets, on this day of 18th Dhul Hujjah, something happened in which they remember on this day. And to this day, 
and the Imam السلام, speaks about this day. What does he say? Ibn Tawus, he reports this again from Al Mufaddal, from Imam Sadiq. Maybe this can be connected to the other narration together so we can get a full picture. He tells Imam Sadiq, he says, Sayyidi, أتأمرني أن أصوم هذا اليوم? Do you order me to fast on this day? And now listen. E wallah. E wallah. E wallah. Three times. إنه اليوم الذي تاب الله فيه على آدم عليه السلام فصام شكرا لله تعالى ذلك اليوم وإنه اليوم الذي ناجى الله تعالى فيه إبراهيم الخليل من النار نجى الله تعالى في إبراهيم الخليل من النار فصام شكرا لله تعالى ذلك اليوم وإنه اليوم الذي أقام موسى هارون عليه السلام علما فصام شكرا لله ذلك اليوم وإنه اليوم الذي أظهر عيسى بن مريم وصيه شمعون الصفا فصام شكرا لله ذلك اليوم وإنه اليوم الذي أقام رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم عليا للناس علما وأبان فيه فضله ووصيته فصام شكرا لله عز وجل ذلك اليوم وإنه ليوم صيام وقيام وإطعام وصلة الأخوان وفيه مرضات الرحوان ومرغمة الشيطان Now it's time to translate this yeah. It's a beautiful hadith It is very beautiful By Allah, by Allah, by Allah, yes Three times Fast or mufaddal Today is the day on which Allah accepted the repentance of Adam alayhi salam and Adam in thanks to Allah fasted on this day. Today is the day in which Allah saved Ibrahim from the fires of Namrud and Ibrahim alayhi salam fasted on this day in thanks to Allah. Today is the day in which Prophet Musa appointed Harun as his representative and they fasted that day in thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today is the day in which Prophet Jesus Isa alayhi salam appointed Shamoun al-Safa Simon as his Khalifa as his representative and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered them to fast on this day. And then it is the day in which Rasulullah appointed Ali ibn Abi Talib as the banner, the leader, the imam, the divine recipient. And they fasted in thanks to Allah on that day. Then he says, today is a day of fasting and a prayer, a day of meeting with your brothers and pleasing them. A day in which Satan is furious and angered. Because Satan does not like this kind of majalis. He does not. And I'm pretty sure right now he's not enjoying what we're doing today. Mm-hmm. But it's our job. This is just, as we say, a scratch on the surface. Because mm-hmm. no matter what we can do, you can never get 100% ma'rifah. All we can do, me, you, the viewers, we can take steps and steps. And as we get closer to Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah will open the doors for us inshallah. to further understanding of this day inshallah so Hayu Shaykhna thank you very much uh, respected viewers uh, we'll go into a short break uh, so please stay tuned Ziba tarin bahane ye khilgat dunyayi to sabi ye kusari yo همسر زهرایی تو ساقیه کسری و همسر زهرایی مرتزا ای همه زندگی من مرتزا ای سند بندگی من مرتزا ای همه زندگی من مرتزا ای سند بندگی مولا هیدر مولا هیدر علی علی جان 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 به تو شد حبل المتین مولا علی جان مولا علی جانم توی امیر المؤمنی مولا علی جانم نام تو ذکر 
تمام انبیا یاد تو یاد تمام اولیا بود تو باعث بود ما سوا بود تو باعث بود ما سوا مولا هیدر مولا هیدر علی علی جان 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 منم به خوب به تو اسیر مولا علی جانم منم غلام و تو امیر مولا علی جانم منم غلام و تو امیر مولا علی جانم کن نظر این دل زارم با شعف فرزده سوی بهشت دل نجف فرزده سوی بهشت دل نجف فرزده سوی بهشت دل نجف مولا هیدر مولا هیدر علی علی جان مولا هیدر مولا هیدر علی علی جان مولا هیدر مولا علی علی جان مولا هیدر مولا هیدر علی علی جان Respected viewers, brothers and sisters, welcome back uh, with me and Sheikh uh, Muntadar al-Karbala'i. Uh, before we went, to, uh, we went into a break, uh, we were discussing the significance of Eid al-Ghadir and how it is the greatest aid to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean, Sayyid, I mean, sorry, Sheikh uh, Muntadar mentioned that this day is so significant that is it is more significant than Eid al-Fitr, Eid al-Adha, and Fridays. Why? Because this occasion can only be celebrated by the true followers of Ahl al-Bayt sallallahu alayhi And as Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said on Eid al-Ghadir, on the day of Ghadir, he says, Allahumma wali man wala wa adi man ada. So it is only the true followers of Ahl al-Bayt who can celebrate and have good time with their families and as narrated by Imam Rida as we've been discussing he says wear your best clothes after you do ghusl of course wear your best clothes and put on the best smelling perfume or cologne and then go out to do ziyarah to Imam, to Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu wassalam so uh, Shaykhna Habibi welcome back um, now it, it's it's a very um, we can't say difficult but some were misled out of the way even their leaders were present on the day of Ghadir I mean some great companions and some other companions exactly. were present exactly. on the day of Ghadir well, I mean we see event, yes. Umar Abu Bakr Talha and Zubair Anas bin Malik much more too. and hundreds of companions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam were present on day of Ghadir. So I mean, and yet after Ghadir, we see the Ummah splitting up into how many divisions, how many sects, how many denominations. Why have they been misled? Yes. However, that's not our discussion tonight. I mean, our discussion tonight focuses on proving why Eid al Ghadir is the greatest Eid to Allah subhanahu wa taala. So. Are there any narrations in non-Shia scripture, non-Shia books? Excellent question. The event of Ghadir. No. And uh, honestly, it's not in my position to speak about how much narrations there are here. The ulama, may Allah bless them, have written so many books. Al-Alam al-Amini has a mawsu'ah called yeah. Al-Ghadir. Al-Ghadir. And it's important to, narr- to, to speak about this book for a bit because Al-Alam al-Amini, he did not have what we have today. He did not have a library where he can put down a nas from a hadith and then he gets all the hadith down. Alam al-Amin is narrated that he used to walk around Najaf 
around Kufa. He would go to all over, all over the Islamic cities and he would try to get the manuscripts and then he would try to take them and transcribe them down in his book, all the authentic sources. And focusing on the historical texts and the hadith narrated from the books of the Mukhalifi. So, I mean, of course, here we have examples, but I suggest to my viewers to refer to these, these encyclopedias, mm -hmm. such as Alam al Amin's encyclopedia, very and many other encyclopedias. It's a very excellent book. Yeah, very thorough. Now, like you said, Anas. Abu Huraira, Sayyid ibn Arqam, the companions of Rasulullah, the Salih and the Talih, they were all there on that day of Ghadir. So we have examples here. Mm -hmm. One example, I will narrate the fullness of the hadith, while the other examples, we will merely mention the scholar, his time of death, so you know how far back he was. Then we will mention the book that it's narrated in, in terms that the viewers get an understanding that there's a lot of ahadith and yes here I have maybe four, five, six narrations and that's already considered in Ilm al-Rajal as tawatir. You know of course there are different metan, the different content in the hadith but still they all have one same meaning which is Rasulullah appointing Ayyad ibn Talib as the master after him. So why did the ummah turn back on their heels on that day of Sakhifah? It's very important. Because history is very important. It is. That's why we must study history explicitly to able to find the exact historical events so we cannot do the same mistakes today. Yeah. First example, Al Hafid Abu Bakr Abdullah ibn Muhammad ibn Abi, Abi Shayba. Mm -hmm. He has a famous book known as Musannaf ibn Abi Shayba. Mm -hmm. He died in the year 235 after Hijrah. Mm -hmm. Tenth year after Hijrah, 235 after Hijrah. Meaning this was after about 230 years after the event of Ghadir. He's considered from the Mutaqaddimin, the scholars that, that lied between the time frame of 200 to 500 years after Hijrah. He is a non-Shia'i scholar. He's a prominent Mukhalif scholar. And he is known as a notorious scholar amongst, amongst the Mukhalifi. He reports this on the authority of Al-Barra ibn A'zab, who was also a Sahabi who witnessed the event of Ghadir. This man, he says, كنا مع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم في السفر فنزلنا بغدير خم فنودي لصلاة الجماعة And then it says that we were on our way back from Hajj. We stopped by the valley of Ghadir and the call for prayer began. We prayed al dhuhr under a tree and after the completion of this prayer Rasulullah, picture this, Rasulullah took the hand of Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. It says here, فَأَخَذَ بِيَدِ عَلِيٍ He still didn't raise it to the sky yet. فَأَخَذَ بِيَدِ عَلِيٍ فَقَالْ أَلَسْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ إِنِّي أَوْلَى بِكُلِّ مُؤْمِنٍ مِنْ نَفْسِهِ قَالُوا بَلَى يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ فَأَخَذَ بِيَدِ عَلِيٍ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ فَقَالْ أَلَّهُمَّ مَنْ كُنْتُ مَوْلَاهِ فَعَلِيٌ مَوْلَاهِ Allahumma wali man wala wa adi man ada. Then it says, Falakiyahu Umar ba'da dalik faqal hani an lakaya ibn abi talib. Bakhin, bakhin. In another narration, Bakhin, bakhin lakaya ibn abi talib. Asbahta wa am saita mawla kuli mu'minin wa mu'mina. Mawlai wa mawla. In a different narration, exactly. Bakhin, bakhin lakaya ibn abi talib. أصبحت مولاي ومولا كل مؤمن ومؤمنة. سبحان الله. So he says that he took the hand of Ali and he said, Do you not know that I am closer to the believers than themselves? Meaning I have a wilaya, a capability and decree over their own bodies and his life than than they do. Yes, رسول الله. We testify. He raised the hand of Ali and he said, Whomever I am his master and his mola, then Ali is his master. O oh Allah, love whoever loves him, befriend whoever befriends him, and be an enemy to whoever is an enemy to him. The narrator says, after the Prophet said this, Umar came to Ali ibn Abi Talib and said, Glad tidings, O son of Abi Talib, 
you have become the mawla of every believing man and every believing woman and as you added in a different narration you have become my, my master, master and the master of, of every believing man and every believing woman that's one example another example the imam of the hanbali scholar ahmad ibn hanbal death 241 after hijrah he narrates in his musnad ahmad ibn abi hanbal volume 4 page 281 a similar report and in his same volume he narrates volume 5 page 355 hadith mm -hmm. 18011 and also in a different book ahmad ibn hanbal has a book called fada'il al-sahaba where he narrates the merit of the sahaba volume 2 page 596 hadith 1016 mm -hmm. that's just ahmad ibn hanbal next hadith al hafid abu ya'la al musuli he has a book called Musnad ibn Musnad Abu Ya'la al Musali. Yeah. He died in the year 307 after Hijrah. See, so we're going slowly on the timetable. In his Musnad, page 100, and then the same hadith is narrated by Ibn Kathir in his Bidayah wal Nihai, also another very prominent scholar. I can even say that some of these scholars are considered Nawasab too. Yeah. But they have narrated this hadith. Volume 5, page 209. To 210. Because they can't ignore the fact, Al -haq. it's, it's, it's Al -haq. a historical fact that history cannot be altered. As, as you mentioned, and as Adil Bayt, and as scholars mentioned, that thousands, tens of thousands of people Attended were present that on that day. Yeah. So they can't just ignore uh, such a significant fact. Yet, what do they say? Some people, I mean, uh, sorry for cutting you off, Father. but some scholars have said, you know, recent scholars, They've said when Rasulullah says, Oh Allah, be the master, make Ali the master of whoever um, uh, you are master. Yes. If I am their master, Ali. then Ali is your master. So they say that Ali is only a role model. Yes, that's their tafsir. He's, he's only a spiritual leader. I don't have to, you know, follow. In, or in he's footsteps. the master of my family yeah. members, not the master of the ummah in terms of I don't, I don't rely on the nafs. Subhanallah. That's, I mean, I, that's I don't understand when, that. When the, there's a problem with the intellect, the aql. That's where there's a problem with the intellect. Yeah. Now, one more example, because we got to make sure we bring the barhan so we don't get questioned later mm -hmm. on. Abu Jarir al-Tabari, no. the one who is known for his famous tarikh al-Tabari, in his tafsir, he has a tafsir called Tafsir al-Tabari. Volume 4, volume 3, sorry, page 428 also narrates a similar event that happened. Now, we know what happened. We know that, that Umar ibn al-Khattab, Abu Bakr, uh, all these people that, that later on, they turned back on their heels. Yes, in the zahir, outside, mm -hmm. what did they do? They pledged allegiance to Ali ibn Abi Talib. Our Imam السلام, there's a hadith found in our books in which the Imam السلام, gives us what truly happened on that day. And I know this is not part of the question, but I, I find it's very important to narrate this hadith. Mm -hmm. Al Kulaini in his kafi narrates with a sahih chain of transmission. He says, An, an Hassan al Jamal, Qal Hamil to Aba Abdullah alayhi salam, min al Madina ila Mecca. فلما انتهينا إلى مسجد غدير نظر نظر إلى ميسرة المسجد فقال ذلك موضع قدم رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم حيث قال من كنت مولاه فعلي مولاه ثم نظر إلى الجانب الآخر فقال ذلك موضع فسطات أبي بكر وعمر ومولى أبي حديفة وأبي عبيدة الجراح so this, this narrator says that I was with Abu Abdullah on his way to Hajj from Medina to Mecca. We stopped by the Masjid of Ghadir, Masjid of Ghadir Khum, and Abu Abdullah stopped me and he said, on the right here is the Athar, the remnants of where Rasulullah stood and raised Ali's hand and yeah. said, Man kuntu mawla fa Ali al mawla. Then he looks and says, see down there, that is the location of the tent of the companions of Rasulullah. And then it says, it's very interesting here. It says, فَلَمَّا إِنْ رَآهُ رَافِعًا يَدَيْهِ قَالَ بَعْضُهُمَا لِبَعْضِ They began speaking to each other. As mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not hear them. Yeah. إِنْظُرُوا إِلَىٰ عَيْنَيْهِ They're 
ridiculing Rasulullah and insulting Rasulullah. Inzuru ila aynayhi taduru ka ennahuma aynan ayna majnoonin. Fanazala Jibreel alayhi salam bihadi il ayah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa en yukadu alladhina kafaru liyuzliqoonaka bi absarihim lamma sama'u al-dhikr. Wa yakooluna innahu lamajnoon. Wa ma huwa illa dhikrun lil alameen. He says that they were sitting down and then they began to look at the eyes of Rasulullah. They says, look at his eyes. They revolve and look upon us as if the eyes billah, of a crazy man. After this, it says the Archangel Jibra'il, peace be upon him, ascended with the following verse. Those who disbelieve, meaning those this group of people, are disbelievers. That means their allegiance was nothing but a vahir thing, a hypocritical allegiance. Those who disbelieve show their ridicule, displeasure in their eyes when they hear the message, the reminder, and say he is crazy. Allah tells them, say, it is in fact a message to the entire world. Now it's very important here, the Imam when he says, when, when, when it says in the Quran, mm -hmm. here hears Ali ibn Abi Talib. Because Rasulullah is speaking about Ali ibn Abi Talib. Yeah. And then Allah says, reply to them and say, but he is a dhikr to the alameen, to the universes, to the, all the worlds. Don't try to ridicule Ali ibn Abi Talib. Mm -hmm. Who are you to ridicule Ali ibn Abi Talib? When Ali comes from a father like Abu Talib, the cousin of the greatest human being. The cousin being. of the greatest human being. Those, the one who is, his wife is Sayyidina Nisa al Ali, the wow. transcendent maiden, Fatima al Zahra, Salamullahi alayha. Allah quickly replies to the enemies of Islam. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. This is one of the secrets that the Imam reveals to us. Because we can only see the Zahir from the hadith. The Imam goes to the bottom, to the inner hidden secrets, and tells us their bay'ah was merely a bay'ah of hypocrisy in order to gain mm -hmm. the sultah and the commands because if they truly gave allegiance to somebody like Ali ibn Abi Talib somebody who used to walk the nights and feed the orphans somebody who used to say I do not want to live under shade because there might be somebody outside that the scorching sun burns his face so I want to be and I want to feel what he feels no because there's something wrong with the heart, Ahmed. It is. Something wrong with the heart. It is. I mean, it's, it's very touching how, how you mentioned that. But it's, it's weird how they were misled. And as you mentioned, they have corrupted hearts. I mean, someone who ple pledges allegiance to, to, like to someone like Ali ibn Abi Talib, the greatest master after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Nafsu Muhammad. You are to me like Aaron was to Moses, but there is no prophet after, after me. me. Why did they, you know, That's what jealousy be misguided? They were jealous. Dunya. I mean, this world, it's, 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 it's very weird how, you know, Indeed. people like Umar, Abu Bakr, uh, Ibn Hanbal, and all these um, Khalifin scholar and Nawasib, they were present on that day, yet, why didn't they take the actual uh, message of Rasulullah yes. sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam? I mean, subhanallah, subhanallah. But as everyone knows, I mean, even the mukhalifin know this fact that Ali ibn Abi Talib is the source of unity in this world. No one made just rules and was moving according to justice like Ali ibn Abi Talib sallallahu alayhi wa I mean, in, if the people now stuck, and before, even, even before, if they stuck to the rightful Imam and on the path of righteousness and accepting, truly accepting that Ali ibn Abi Talib is a divine leader chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet Muhammad did not choose Ali ibn Abi Talib. It was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who chose. You know, if, if they say he's a spiritual leader or a role model, I mean, where I mean, did all the, 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 the narrations go? Inni akmaltu lakum dinakum. I have completed your religion. Completing your religion means that you have to follow in the footsteps of Ahlul Bayt mm -hmm. and the footsteps of Ali ibn Abi Talib. But, I mean, what happened to the Ummah after that? 
it's 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 confusing it's it's heartbroken but uh, we see that even in Quran Quranic verses and narrations by prophets by uh, Imams by the Ahlul Bayt Salawatullahi Alayhim um, how can you comment on the recent events that happened I mean during this Hajj that, that just went oh, by yes, and the tragic. differences that you know not, not just in this Hajj I mean every Hajj we see problems, uh, problems occurring between Sunni and Shia I mean when do we actually unite when do we actually stand under the rightful umbrella the umbrella of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the umbrella of Ahlul Bayt I mean it's, it's very confusing it is very confusing what happened the tragic occasions that happened in Hajj let me tell you this there's no organization why because the hearts have not found Ahlul Bayt the hearts either are ignorant for the rights of Ahlul Bayt or the hearts have enmity and anger towards Ahlul Bayt now there's a very important ayah in the Quran in this ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَاَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا وَاذْكَرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ and hold steadfast to the rope of Allah which stretches out to you and be not divided amongst yourself and remember with gratitude Allah's favor upon you this verse in the Holy Quran has a ta'wil and in both our narrations and the narrations of the Mukhalifin, it has been narrated that this Hablullah, that if the Ummah wants to not disunite, they should hold on to this rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what we get from the ayah. Now, this is a, a scholar by the name of Al Qanduzi Al Hanafi. He has a book called Yanabi Al Muwadda. He reports the following hadith from Tafsir al Tha'labi. And he narrates with his chain of transmission to who? To Ja'far al-Sadiq, peace be upon him. It's a narration found in the books of the Mukhalifin, but Al-Qanduzi narrates it in his book. He says, we are the rope of Allah mentioned in the Quran and hold fast together to the rope of Allah. That's one example. Another example in Kitab al-Manaqib from Ibn Abbas. It says that we were with the Prophet and the Arabian man came to the Prophet and he asked him, Ya Rasulullah, I heard you utter the following verse and hold mm -hmm. steadfast to the rope of Allah and do not disunite. Mm -hmm. What is the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Rasulullah says, he took his hand and placed it on the hands of Ali ibn Abi Talib and he said, hold steadfast unto him. He is the stronghold and he is the rope of Allah. I mean, this is two hadith. And then I also found this maqala by Ibn Hajar, mm -hmm. Al Haytami in his Sawa'aq al Muharqa. Yeah. One of our ulama writes, he says, Ibn Hajar has recorded these verses mm -hmm. under the category of those that ascended for the house of Muhammad. Yeah. He transcribed these verses in his famous book known as Sawa'aq al Muharqa, in which he refutes the Shi'as. But at the same time, he narrates Fada'il of Ahlul Bayt. Chapter 11, he recorded the report of Al-Ta'labi on the authority of As-Sadiq So now we say, ponder upon this verse. And then we have a hadith of Rasulullah that goes side by side with this verse. Inni tariku feekum al-thaqlain. Al-thaqlain or al-thaqlain. Ma in tamasaktum bihuma lan tadillu ba'di abada. Kitab Allah wa itrati ahla bayti. Sahih al-Tirmidhi, Kanzul Ummal, Sahih Muslim, al Mustadrak, and several other narrations I don't have the time to bring the sources for. Mm -hmm. Allah, <coughs> Rasulullah says that Quran and Ahlul Bayt, hold these together and they will not separate and stay together until they reach me at the pond of Kothar. What does that mean? It means that imagine right now if these organizers, these these people, I mean, I don't like calling it Saudi Arabia because it's Ardul Hijaz, it's the city of Rasulullah, it's the country of Rasulullah. But for the sake of argument, we call it Saudi Arabia. If they were to hold on to Ahlul Bayt and the Quran together, 
not hold on to the Quran and leave By Ahlul Bayt because he says that these two will never go astray and they are your guidance meaning that if you have these two together you will not have this unity in the Ummah because first of all Rasulullah says that Ayyad ibn Talib is the Habdullah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and here in the Quran we say that what that if you hold on to it you will not disunite I mean look at Karbala Subhanallah. Imam Al-Hussein testifies to me 20 million, 25 million, 30 million zawar How come we don't have a stampede like this? And lovers, they run towards al Hussein alayhi salam Especially those that have not seen him and they weep and they cry Children, old men, old women They come here, but shiru, all the hearts <laughs> of pure oh, All yeah. the hearts have been Have taken and removed all darkness And all enmity and the hearts have been filled with the Noor of Ahlul Bayt. The Noor of Ahlul Bayt governs this entire universe. The entire universe is governed by Ahlul Bayt and their Noor. Now, this is very important now because I just pray that my viewers understand this. That imagine if you can give the organization of, of Mecca and Al-Hajj to the Fathom Ahlul Bayt and see what happens. Just give a test run. Let's see what happens. 700 to 800 people killed and they're going to visit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Hajj. They're going on a very spiritual pilgrimage and no matter how much money is spent, subhanAllah, because these lands are lands that have been stolen, maqsuba, Oh, yeah. Just like the land of Fadak that was taken from Fatima to Zahra. <laughs> no khayr comes because they do not have permission oh, yeah, to, to build on this land, take oil from this land. This is the result of what happened in Hajj. There was no Ahl al involved. Oh yeah. Mal asaf. I mean, it's, it's, it's very unfortunate. Uh, but uh, we're coming uh, to a conclusion. So uh, if you can recite to us uh, what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam uttered on or said on day of Ghadir. This is the part I've been waiting for. Nah. Rasulullah delivered the most eloquent speech on the day of Ghadir. Time is very limited. Yeah, and we have approximately about five to five ten minutes. Yeah. So inshallah, let's skip some parts of this, and I want to go to parts of the in which Rasulullah emphasized on. So he says that, O oh people, mm -hmm. prefer him Ali over others. There is no knowledge except that Allah has divulged it to me and all the knowledge I have learned I have divulged to the Imam. Mm -hmm. And there is no knowledge except that I divulge it to Ali ibn Abi Talib. Meaning that Ali ibn Abi Talib, if you want to find unity in the Ummah, in the khutbah, the Rasul says that Ali ibn Talib is the Hadi and the Mahdi. He is the guide. Salat so al-Mustaqim. If you want to find the path in order to, to Allah for yeah. unity, then you must hold on to Ali ibn Abi Talib. Now, yeah. before I end, one more part here. It says, أَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةِ وَعَاتُوا الزَّكَاةِ وَأْمُرُوا بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَنْهُوَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ Sayyid Sadiq al-Shirazi, may Allah protect him, he says that narrating the khutbah of Ghadir and reviving is wajib kifai on the Islamic nation. Because here he says the peak of enjoining righteousness is to resort to my speech and to convey it to whomever did not attend and to, and to order him on my behalf to accept it, us, our job. And then he says, and to likewise order him not to violate it for it is an order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Word from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And now I want to leave you, if you may give me the time, I won't take any more of your time, but I really need to narrate the words of Fatima al-Zahra sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Of course, of course. Because we spoke about organization, we spoke about disunity. I mean, what one sentence, what one sentence from Sayyidatina Sa'al Alameen. In her khutbah al-fadakiyya al-fatamiyya, ruh ilaha al-fida. She says, وَطَاعَتُنَا نِظَامٌ لِلْمِلَّةِ 
وَإِمَامَتَنَا أَمَانٌ لِلْفِرْقَةِ The obligation to avoid, obey us, Ahl al-Bayt, has been prescribed to set order in the community. Now imagine if these words were taken into consideration. And our authority, Imama, has been prescribed to save the people from the differences. And now I say what Imam al-Sadiq taught me to recite on this day. I want to say, Alhamdulillah, alladhi ja'alana min al-mutamassikeen bi wilayati amir al-mu'mineen. Ya Allah, I thank you that you gave me the honor of being a follower of Ali ibn Abi Talib, that you gave me this blessing of being born out of pure birth because my mother and father gave me this blessing. Alhamdulillah alladhi akramana bihaadha al-yawm wa ja'alana min al-muwafeen bi ahdihi ilayna wa mithaqihi alladhi awtaqna bihi min wilayati 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 amrah walqawwama biqistihi walam yaj'alana min al-jahideen wal-mukadhibeen bi yawm al-deen I ask Allah that He has graced us today these are the words to be recited on this day of Ghadir. That these are the day that Allah, you have graced me. That I'm holding his wilaya and not rejecting it, subhanAllah. Imagine what we have right now, my dear brother Ahmed, is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh, of course. And of they course. say, Alhamdulillah, alladhi ja'ala kamala deenihi wa tamama ni'matihi bi wilayati amir al-mu'mineen alayhi salam. I thank Allah that he has placed the completion of this religion and his blessings in the wilayah in the divine leadership of Imam Ali alayhi salam and I conclude by saying Qala Ali ibn Musa al-Rida ikmalu al-deen bi wilayatina ahl al-bayt wal bara'ata min a'da'ina the religion is complete with the wilayah to us ahl al-bayt and the bara'ah this association from our enemies uh, thank you very much, Habibi Shaykhna. Uh, inshallah, we can learn from the lessons of Ahlul Bayt, salawatullahi alayhim. I mean, as we've been mentioning and repeating and repeating, Eid al Ghadir is the greatest day, the greatest Eid to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Allah was completed. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, that, that, that he able created, to revive it today. Alhamdulillah, that he created a Shia and followers thank of Ahlul Bayt. Thank our mother and father. Alhamdulillah. Thank our mothers and Alhamdulillah. Father. Alhamdulillah. Thank you very much, Habibi Shaykhna. Uh, may, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and continue um, the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which are showered upon the mu'mineen and the believers on a night like this. So respected viewers, thank you very much once again for tuning in. Uh, I would like just to say for all the Shia and for all the mu'mineen around the world and congratulate you once again uh, for uh, rejoicing Eid al Ghadir, Eid Allah al Akbar, Allah's greatest Eid. Uh, please stay tuned for the upcoming episodes. And if you didn't get the chance to view this full episode or the previous episodes, you can go on our YouTube channel at Imam Hussein 3 TV and check out our YouTube, page, uh, YouTube uh, Facebook page. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.